Welcome to Inspired Living with Mark Lanehart, the Intuitive Prospector. Every Wednesday, Mark, along with his special guests, will explore thought-provoking topics and ideas that promote creativity, self-help, healing, happiness, and well-being to inspire you on your spiritual journey. Each week, Mark will discuss different paths to achieving a more spiritual, balanced, happy, and healthy lifestyle. Topics will elevate consciousness and range from metaphysics to the human and social experience and all things spiritual. Welcome to an inspired community that offers support, encouragement, and new ways of thinking. Mark is a tested, certified, and professional spiritual medium, metaphysical teacher, healer, and spiritual advisor with a spiritual practice based in Seattle, Washington. You are the inspired and the inspiration. I'm aware that people I have loved and have died and are in the spirit world looking after me. That's a quote from the famous Princess Diana, who unfortunately left this world way too early. And we are going to be talking about the spirit world. We're going to pick up from our last episode talking about equanimity. So good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you may be in this beautiful, transformative, awakening, healing planet of ours. This is Inspired Living Radio. I am your host, Mark Lane Hart, the Intuitive Prospector, here on the wonderful Ohm Times Radio Network, where you can listen to us every Wisdom Wednesday at 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern. You can catch all of our past seasons on many different podcast outlets from iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube, Podbean, the list goes on and on, Spotify. So we want to just say thank you for hanging out with us today on the live show. Uh, We're not going to be taking any callers today because we're going to be doing a nice um, conversation about equanimity, kind of picking up where the last episode finished off, and then we're going to be talking about the spirit world. We're going to be talking about mediumship. We're going to be talking about what I like to call the space in between and how we can start to have perception of the spirit world. We're also going to do a nice meditation to get you into that space in between to feel and to know that the spirit world is only ever a thought away and that they're very much around us if we just know where to look, how to feel. As Dr. Wayne Dyer reminds us, when you change the way you look at things, the things that you look at start to change, and that is so very true. In fact, there's a quote from Henry Wadsworth Longfellow where he says, the spirit world around this world of sense floats like an atmosphere and everywhere wafts through these earthly mists and vapors dense, a vital breath of more ethereal air. And what he's saying is it literally is a world within a world. And if we learn to practice the pause, that space in between our inhalation and our exhalation, This is where you know that the spirit world becomes very much alive in your journey and in your pathway. If you want to learn more about the work that I'm doing, you can visit marklanehart.com or internet search The Intuitive Prospector. Like I said, we try to be here either with a live show or on a, or an encore show uh, here on Ohm Times Radio on uh, Wisdom Wednesdays, or what I like to call Wisdom Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern. And we like to say, you are the inspired and the inspiration, but most importantly in this day and age and everything going on in the world is to be inspired, inspire others, inspire before we expire. And... Before we start the show, if you want to interact with us on our social media platforms, what I like to say, my positive platforms uh, for positivity and inspiration and encouragement and motivations, you can go to our Facebook page, which is Inspired Living Radio. That is our public page open to um, our listeners all around the globe. Thank you for tuning in and listening today. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram under the handle Inspired for us. That is the number four. And you can also, again, go to your favorite uh, podcast outlet um, and download or listen to the past six seasons plus that we've been working here on Inspired Living Radio. And with that, let's talk about what we talked about last episode. So if you haven't caught the previous episode before this episode where we're talking about the space in between and perceiving the spirit world. Uh, Last show, we were talking about equanimity and what is equanimity and also mediumship. And I touched briefly on mediumship, and then I said I'd pick up. This is kind of that part two of uh, that first episode. This is part two that we're going to be talking about. And it talks about a lot with the serenity prayer. And with everything going on, I really just want to give an inspired listener shout out to anybody impacted first and foremost by this global pandemic that is once again 
changing and morphing and uh, variant to, you know, impact people's lives, younger people. Um, and so I just want to give a shout out to our healthcare workers, our frontline workers, all of our first responders. Also, my heart is really heavy with everything going on in Haiti with the earthquake that has killed 2,000 people. So mediumship obviously is a real thing to many people in Haiti because over 2,000 souls have transferred over uh, into the etheric world, into heaven, whatever your belief system is. And so my heart goes out to them. And of course, everything going on in Afghanistan, as I sit and watch it unfold, I feel like I'm watching history repeat, you know, whether it was World War II in Dunkirk, which whether it was the Vietnam War and the fall of Saigon, these are still people. These are still humans. These are still souls. These are people that have families and and, and feel and love, and, and my heart just goes out to the people of Afghanistan, the people of Haiti, and of course, everybody impacted by this COVID-19. So it really, you know, it really does bring to your mind of everything that's going on in the world as the world is literally changing and transforming and, and different things are happening historically. Uh, you know, it's always been like that in our history with, you know, um, you know, death and dying and earthquakes and falls of governments and, uh, you know, violence and, and and all those things. And so that can be a lot to take on. And so last episode, I talked about my spiritual practice of equanimity and literally the serenity prayer, which is God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. And the actual definition of equanimity is um, very much a synonym of serenity. And when you look around and when you're, you, you know, you wake up and you start your, your next soul adventure for today, because today is all we have, you look at the world, whether through its social media, whether the news cycle, whether, you know, it's people talking uh, in general at work or within your family and seeing all these disruptions and all this chaos and all this violence and sadness and heaviness, and it can really take a toll on you. And so the practice of equanimity is the state of a psychological stability and composure which is undisturbed by experience of an exposure of emotions, pain, or other phenomenon that may cause others to lose the balance of their mind. And so I spoke about that last episode, the importance of not only becoming aware of equanimity, but also trying to plant seeds, trying to practice equanimity. Uh, I, you know, I personally believe that, you know, to maintain equanimity, I think it's a good thing because it, it's still cultivating the qualities of kindness, compassion, uh, what I finish every show with is be kind, caring, and compassionate until our next soul adventure together. Because I don't never know if it's going to be my last soul adventure, so I can always, you know, leave that reminder. But it's it's the practice of equanimity, and it's a good thing for what we're doing because it it opens and holds space for others in joy and love, but also equanimity balances the giving of your heart's love with the recognition and the acceptance that things are the way that they are. And the only thing that you're ever really in control of, you guys, is how you respond to the external uh, events of our world. Um, you know, without this recognition of equanimity, it's easy to fall into what I call compassion fatigue, help or burnout that can lead to despair, anxiety, depression, negative thoughts, suicide thoughts, and other actions, you know, that aren't healthy for your spiritual journey. So, Check that episode out. If you haven't caught that, that's now streaming over on the uh, podcast channels. Uh, like I said, iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, SoundCl SoundCloud, Deezer, Podcast Addict, Pod Chaser. There's a whole bunch of them. Uh, and of course, you can always come here to Ohm Times. Click on the Ohm Times archives, and you can catch all of the past six seasons. And you can check out other shows. There's great shows here on Ohm Times Radio that you should be checking out if you're on a spiritual quest or maybe you're just having an awakening and uh, you know things are changing and morphing uh, drastically for you, kind of like the caterpillar emerging from the cocoon, and now you're a butterfly ready to fly and experiencing new things. So one of the things that I um, had talked about cultivating equanimity, just to kind of recap, is meditation for equanimity, practicing the pause, focusing on your breath. There's many, many different, there's thousands, hundreds of thousands of different meditations, and with technology at our fingertips, you can go out to the World Wide Web, YouTube, I'm on a few Insight Timer. Uh, you know, I've got some of my favorite. Um, my last one I've got posted at marklaneheart.com on pathways to self healing. And what you do is you cultivate a, a practice and a habit of meditating on equanimity because that's also self awareness, but it's also self care. And it's also helping to balance the monkey mind. And that's what I talked about Monday on Metaphysical Mocha Mondays, which is my Facebook and YouTube live broadcast show where I talked about, you know, 
taming and calming down the monkey minds of our ego and how to find balance and all of that. So cultivating equanimity is, you know, meditation. Try try doing it daily. I usually say in the morning because it helps set the tone for the rest of your day. You can use meditation at night to fall asleep for sure, 100%. But try to do it early in the morning when you first get up, when you're in the shower, uh, when you're driving to work, uh, you know, wherever you may be. Try to do it without any kind of interruptions and just do it for a few minutes and practice that word, equanimity, serenity. Practice your breath. I always say, you know, great eating habits, low sugars, hydration, good sleep. These are also paramount to getting your day started. Uh, saying no to multitasking and doing too much, which is something I had to learn because I'm, I'm easily pulled in eight different directions, and sometimes I just need to take a breath, take a time out. I think of sports and be like, okay, time out. Let me come back to center, take a few breaths, practice equanimity, and then say, you know, no, I'm not going to to do all of these. So. Uh, surrender to your feelings, you know, acknowledge how you're feeling. If you're feeling, you know, um, that, you know, uh, that uh, compassion fatigue that I talked about, the helper burnout, uh, and just, you know, becoming aware and surrender to those feelings. Um, creativity, sports, mindfulness, these are all powerful tools that you could put in your spiritual toolbox to practice and cultivate equanimity. And last show, I talked about what Carl Jung talked about. He said, even a happy life cannot be without a measure of darkness, and the word happy would lose its meaning if it were not balanced by sadness. So we know in our journey that there's sadness surrounding us. We see it every day. Uh, the news cycles, the social media platforms have really done a good job of bringing that into our awareness and into our vision and into our focus. But he also said it's better to take things as they come along with patience and equanimity. And that's just to really help you on your journey today and go go over what I was talking about last episode. And I had read a poem by John O'Donohue about new, the new beginning, so it's a great poem if you have not heard that. And then I also practice what I have come to coin the FAR technique, F-A-A-R-R. And if you use the FAR technique, the farther you can go. And that's also practicing and cultivating equanimity. So the FAR technique is to feel it, acknowledge it, have awareness to it, respond to it, which you don't have to respond, which is a response, and then release it. So if you practice those steps, it can help you with your journey and moving farther farther down the path, path with mantras, meditations, equanimity, uh, paying it forward, the golden rule, treating others as you like to be treated, and of uh, you know, helping others. That's that's why we're all here. So we're gonna uh, go to our first break here in just a few minutes. But when we come back, I'm gonna take us into a nice I am meditation. It's a uh, meditation that we'll do for about oh until our second break, so about 15 minutes, and it's it's for you know self-help it's for personal change it's the i am meditation so you you know you 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 can say i deserve to be dot 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 i want to be dot 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 i can be dot 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 i will be dot 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 i am and we're going to go over some you know just some affirmations we're going to do three of them one is based on purpose one is based on abundance and the other one is based on healing and they're just nine affirmations that i use in my journey that i share with people to help with all three of those purpose healing and abundance because that's what we all want in life and then we're going to start talking about perceiving the spirit world and the perception of mediumship and those that are no longer here but that are, that are really all around us at any given time james van prague talked about the spirit world is able to get through to you easily when your mind is still and clear. Meditation is often referred to as sitting in the silence. I like to call it sitting in the power, but sitting in the silence works. Whenever you want to reach spirit from this side of life, start by sitting in the silence. Start by sitting in the power. And what I like to say, you know, is the um, the space in between. So when you take a breath in, that quick pause before you exhale is that space in between. That's where you connect to your, your breath connects you to your own soul, your own spirit, but it also calms the mind. It makes you more aware to perceive the world of spirit, mediumship, those that have crossed over, whether it's a fur baby, whether it's a loved one, whether it's a coworker or a friend, it's not an angel. It's not an ascended master. It's not your spirit guy because those are all subjective. Mediumship is based on evidence through confirmations and validations that a loved one is here with a yes, no, I'm not sure. And so we're going to get to that place that James Van Prague talked about when you want to reach spirit from this side of the life or this world within a world, because think about it, guys, metaphysically, heaven is not up, 
Hell is not down because we live on a round planet. But we have this uh, this thought of ascending because, you, you know, even with my own near-death experience, I had the impression that I was ascending up. So therefore, we have been, you know, learned to believe and taught that heaven is up. But I don't believe that anymore because we're on a round planet living in space that circles around a big ball of fire. And I, and I truly believe that the spirit world is only ever a thought away. And we can tune into that. But again, it's it's very subtle. The energy, the impressions, we're going to talk about different clairs that you can work with after our meditation. We're going to talk about the subtleness of the spirit world because it doesn't come in like a, a lion. It's, it's actually more like coming in like a lamb, if you will. So um, just practice, you know, as we go to our first break, we're going to just start focusing on our breath. So during the commercial break, what I want you to do is just to start to take a breath in through your nose, let the air warm up in your nasal passageway and come down into your lungs. And then during that quick pause, that space in between your inhalation and how you feel before you exhale, look at your thoughts, look at your mind, feel your body and then exhale. And that's how you start to perceive the spirit world. It's through the power of breath. It's quite interesting. There's not all these big rituals and not all these special uniforms or fancy outfits you have to get into to conjure up the spirit world. It really is just a breath away. It's really just a thought away. And we're going to go to our first break. And when we come back, we're going to do a nice meditation of the I am meditation and we're going to perceive the spirit world today we're talking about the space in between and perceiving the spirit world this is inspired living radio we'll be back here in just a few minutes the future of internet radio is here ohm times radio iom fm Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. Listeners, we hope you're enjoying the shows here on Ohm Times Radio. Mark Lanehart here and host of Inspired Living Radio. And I'd like to invite you to my morning show of inspiration, encouragement, healing, motivations, transformations, and discovering that diamond within. Metaphysical Mocha Mondays every Monday morning at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, over on the Intuitive Prospector Facebook page and my YouTube channel, Soul Adventures. Dare to dream, dare to explore. Dare to live and discover that diamond within. Coping 19, brought to you by CDC and the Ad Council. Do you feel like your emotions are all over the place? That's normal during this abnormal time. There are a number of ways to cope. Maintain a healthy routine, get enough sleep, eat nutritious food, and exercise at least 30 minutes each day. Schedule some time to talk with a friend or family member. And remember, you can always take a few deep breaths to feel more centered. Find more self-care and coping tips at coping-19.org. And welcome back to Inspired Living Radio. Today we are talking about equanimity from last episode that we did, but also talking about the space in between and starting to perceive the world of spirit, whatever that belief system is for you, the afterlife, heaven, I call it summerland, God, angels, whatever that is for you. We're going to move into a nice meditation for a few minutes here. and We're going to practice the pause. We're going to practice that space in between our inhalation and our exhalation. And it's that power of breath that connects us to our soul. It can also be for transformations and for healing. It can be for self-help. It can be for, you know, if you want to change your life, you need to change how you think and change what you do. You know, self-help is a personal change. It's being happy and it's completely up to you, no one else. And when you start to be aware and you start to perceive the world of spirit, 
Maybe you don't have a belief in the spirit world, and that's okay too. I've you know worked with people that are both uh, atheists and have no belief to agnostic like myself, wanting proof of the spirit world to full believers. But what you can do is you can practice the pause. You can move into your breath and discover that space in between our world and what I call the etheric world or the spirit world. And really, it's about just taking breath and about tuning in and, and perceiving, or what I like to say, ask, believe, receive, perceive. So personal self-help and transformation is a personal change. It starts with you, and it's the realization that this is all really in your own hands. It's your decision to do something about it, free will and choice. And when you set your intentions, metaphysically, that energy will follow that intention your own self-belief system, whatever that is, the key to a successful life, to change, to achievement, to contentment, to happiness, to connecting to the spirit world. And like I said with uh, before the break when I was talking about that quote from James Van Prague, where he talked about the spirit world is able to get through to you easily when your mind is still and clear, and meditation is often referred to as sitting in the silence. I call it sitting in the power. Whatever you want to coin it or call it, that's fine. But whenever you want to reach spirit from this side of life, you start by sitting in the silence, sitting in the power. And as we begin our meditation, I'm going to start with a quote from William Blake where he says, To see a world in a grain of sand and a heaven in a wildfire, wildflower, hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in an hour. And what I'm going to have you do now as you listen to my voice, uh, if you're driving, go ahead and pull over. We don't have anybody driving or be unsafe while you're listening to this meditation. And we want to get you nestled down into the place and the space that you're at. I always like to say that comfort is queen. And just get nestled down and just start to focus in on your breath. And as you breathe in, find that space in between the inhale and the exhale. And bring yourself into what I like to call the magic in the moment. Good. And during this meditation, we're going to work on affirmations. I am affirmations focused on abundance, purpose, and healing. And after the meditation, we'll go into our second break and we'll come back and we'll talk about mediumship mental mediumship, perceiving of the spirit world. So as you listen to the sound of my voice and the vibration that's coming through the airwaves, take in a nice, deep, cleansing, healing breath, breathing in what you want through the nose. Practice the pause, hold on to that space in between, calm the mind, and with a nice big sigh, release the breath out through your mouth. Good. Ask, believe, receive, perceive. Knowing that the spirit world, the etheric plane, whatever your belief system is, is only ever a thought away. And we can connect to that world, a world within our own, if you choose to. And as you take another nice deep breath in, we're going to focus on the nine affirmations of healing. And as you take this breath in, you're going to say to yourself, I am a survivor. And as you hear those words resonate, I am a survivor, give yourself a nice big exhale. <sighs> Knowing that you survived long enough, now it's time to start living. And now connecting deeper into the space that you are, letting go of the past, no longer suffering the past or projecting to the future. Take another nice deep breath in as we focus on healing and say to yourself, I am always healing and I'm never alone. Let those words resonate and vibrate. And when you're ready, the nice big sigh, let it go. As we take another nice deep breath in, listening to the mantra, uh, I am, I am willing to see things differently even if I'm not ready to yet. Hold on to those words, that vibration, that healing affirmation. And when you're ready, nice big sigh, let it go. Becoming even more connected now to your higher self, to the world of spirit, who you are and what you want in this journey, in this soul adventure. Take another nice deep breath in, in through the nose, 
with the words of, I am learning to let go of fear. I am learning to let go of fear. See where that resonates with you. And when you're ready, a nice big sigh, just release. Knowing that fear is false evidence appearing real. Or face everything and rise. Continuing with our healing affirmations of I am. Take another nice deep breath in through the nose. Listening to the words, I am learning to respect the process when I do not understand it. Hold on to those words and that vibration. Connecting to yourself, your breath, your soul. Practicing the pause and the space in between. With a nice big sigh, let it go. Good. Feeling more relaxed, more comfortable, more confident, more balanced. Allowing the healing process to take root. Take another nice deep breath in with the affirmation of I am. I am allowed to feel good about myself. I am allowed to feel good about myself. Hold on to those words, that emotion, that vibration. And with a nice big sigh, let it go. <sighs> so good. Feel that energy. Feel that prana. Feel that life force. Science calls this the human energy field or the HEF. And as we prepare for our next breath, I want you to go now deeper into your breath. As you breathe in, your stomach should extend out, going deeper and connecting to yourself, the spirit world, your higher self, whatever your belief system may be. And as you take that breath in, the words are, I am not the negative thoughts I think. I am not the negative thoughts I think. Hold on to those words, that emotion, that vibration. And with a nice big sigh, release and let go. Good. Let the vibration resonate through you. Releasing, reviving, reflecting, rejuvenating. Taking another nice deep breath. Go deeper in your breath now. Really push that stomach out as you breathe in through the nose with the mantra and affirmation on the healing process of I am, I am ready to release the stories in my head and forgive myself for believing everything my inner circle or inner critic has ever said. I am ready to release the stories in my head and forgive myself for believing everything my inner circle or inner critic has ever said. And with a nice big sigh, let it go. We're going now deeper into this meditation, deeper into this breath work and connecting and perceiving the world of spirit. And as you take a nice deep breath in, the words are, I am willing to see the truth about myself, no matter how beautiful it is. Hold on to those words. Hold on to that emotion. Hold on to that thought. And when you're ready, nice big sigh and just release. The stories we tell ourselves over and over again are the stories that we believe and the stories we affirm by how we live and how we love. And those are the nine affirmations of healing. And as we move into our purpose now, becoming aware of the spirit world, perceiving what is not seen by the physical eye, remembering that we have three eyes in life, two to look with the physical eye and one to see in our third eye or the brow chakra. And as we take another nice deep breath in, becoming even more connected to our source, connected to the place in which we're listening to this meditation and the sound of my voice, our purpose. And with that breath in, I am a living, breathing example of the kind of world I want to live in. Hold on to that emotion, those words, that vibration. And when you're ready, release. Focused on purpose, preparing for our next breath, practicing the pause, and becoming aware of the space in between our inhalation and our exhalation as we perceive the spirit world. I am a powerful force for good in the world. Breathing that in, holding on to that, I am a powerful force for good in the world. 
And when you're ready, release. And now we're going to continue with this process, just listening to the, the sound of my voice, the vibrations as they come and go, just like ocean waves coming and going, the breath comes and goes. As we continue to breathe in deeply through our nose, I am on the right path. I am moving in the right direction. And release that breath. Focusing on affirmations for our purpose, the I am meditation. Taking another nice deep breath in. I am worthy of all things wonderful. I am worthy of all things wonderful. And release. Continue with an even flow, just like an ocean. Breathing in, I am being guided to what's best for me and everyone else. Practice that equanimity we talked about earlier and let it go. Becoming now even more connected to self, to source, to the world of spirit, the etheric plane. We breathe in with the words, I am powerful enough to live in accordance with my own values, desires, and truths. And let it go. Becoming fully relaxed now, just listening to the sound of my voice. Take that breath in. I am in the exact place I need to be to get to where I want to be. And let it go. Taking another nice deep breath in. I am intentionally promoting a life filled with joy. Hold on to that. Nice big sigh. Let it go. <sighs> nice deep breath in. I am a firm believer in my ideas. Hold on to that as we practice purpose. And let it go. Every I am is true if you repeat it enough. Believe it, see it, achieve it. So for this meditation, we focused on our healing. We have focused on our purpose. And let's bring this meditation home to abundance. Continuing to breathe with me. I am full of life and filled with possibility. And let it go. Taking another nice, deep, cleansing, healing breath in. I am ever expanding yet whole. Wise enough to know that there is plenty left to learn. Humble and happy as I grow. As we focus on the abundance of I am. Nice, deep breath. I am grateful for who I am and who I can be and let it go going deeper with every breath and taking as much air as you can into those lungs feel the energy feel the warmth feel the love feel the abundance the purpose the healing and the transformation I am enough and I have everything I need to get to where I want to be and let it go Continuing to breathe, I am devoted to uncovering the gems that are already here. Or as I like to say, discovering that diamond within. No pressure, no diamond. And let it go. Continuing to breathe now. Feeling good, relaxed, revived, rejuvenated. That deep breath comes in and you repeat, I am a magnet for the experiences I most desire. What we resist persists. The lesson repeats until it completes. And if you're a magnet, attract that good in and let it go. Taking another nice deep breath in. I am an alchemist. I am an alchemist. And let it go. One more nice deep breath. And as you breathe in, I am grateful for every gift that I've been given, have now, and have yet to receive. Believe it, see it, achieve it. Feel it, know it, and let it go. And as we start to wrap up this meditation focused on healing, purpose, and abundance, take another nice deep cleansing healing breath in. 
and say to yourself, I am worthy enough to tune into the abundance nature of who I can be and what I can create and let it go. If we want to see a miracle, have an attitude for gratitude and abundance. And it's not until then that you start to believe in who you truly are through purpose, through healing, through abundance. And let it go. And now, as we wrap up this meditation, we're going to ask the spirit world and those that are no longer in the physical body, but in the etheric plane, the etheric world, to draw close. Take that deep breath in. Ask, believe, receive, and perceive. And let it go. One more nice deep breath. And as you breathe in what you want, take your hands and rub them together. Place them over your heart center. Blink your eyes open. And with a nice big sigh and a nice big ohm, just release what no longer serves you, your higher path, knowing that the spirit world is only ever a thought and feeling in emotion away. Nice big sigh and ohm. good. Now just sit for the next few minutes as we go to our next commercial break. And when we return, we're going to talk about perceiving the world of spirit. And I hope that you'll join me in the last part of this show as we dare to dream, dare to explore, dare to live and discover that diamond within. And so it is. The cutting edge of Conscious Radio, Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Have you wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. Imagine yourself being transported to India, to the banks of the Ganga and an ashram in Rishikesh. Visualize that you are welcome to satsang with an American sannyasi who shares the wisdom of her guru. Your visualization has manifested. Join Satvi Bhagawati Saraswati for inspiration and transformation every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern on Om Times Radio. One planet, 7.3 billion people, only one you. Life offers us many opportunities and learning experiences. Are you ready to explore and discover this beautiful planet, the life and energy all around us, the spiritual world, and what is unseen, along with your own personal soul adventure? Mark Lanehart, the intuitive prospector, is the spiritual connection you have been prospecting for. Internationally known as a tested and professional clairvoyant medium and spiritual advisor, Mark's work as a metaphysical teacher, medical instructor, Radio show host, inspirational writer, and hiking guide are here to help you on a journey of self-discovery, healing, inspiration, education, and a whole lot of spiritual awesomeness. Dare to dream. Dare to explore. Dare to live. For more information on Mark's spiritual practice in Seattle, Washington, please visit marklanehart.com or internet search The Intuitive Prospector. If I could be you. And you could be me. For just one hour. If you could find a way. To get inside. Each other's mind. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk, Walk a mile, mile in, in my, my shoes. shoes. We've all felt left out. And for some, that feeling lasts more than a moment. We can change that. Learn how at belongingbeginswithus.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Walk a mile in my shoes.
right. Welcome back to Inspired Living Radio. I hope you enjoyed that nice 15-minute meditation that we did where we focused on practicing the pause, the space in between our breaths, and perceiving the spirit world. And so now with that meditation, we opened the show talking about cultivating equanimity. We went into that meditation to calm the mind and to calm the brain. And now we're going to talk about perceiving and understanding that there is a world past our physical world, a world filled with love, healing, transformation, guidance, inspiration. Everything we ever need to know, if you think about it, is all within a download. It's how we actually access the download. And I was looking at you know some fo- famous people and famous quotes, and actually one, one gentleman who's on a very spiritual pathway, you, kn- you may know him from the Cheech and Chong movies, Tommy Chong, and he said this, when you hit a groove, it's not you, it's the spirit world. The spirit whispers the ideas in your brain and you prod and prod you along. They're the ones that are really happy. And I thought that that was kind of funny because as we practice our affirmations of I am based on healing, purpose, and abundance, you may have become aware or you may have started to notice maybe your your skin got warm or the hair on your arms kind of stood up or you felt like cobwebs on the back of your neck or the top of your head or the side of your cheek. These are all energy aspects of how the spirit will can draw close to you. You may have felt just this overall warmth, which I call the spiritual hug. And when we start to have perception based on a calm mind and shutting the ego off, we start to perceive things outside of what we don't see with the physical eye, very similar to what the microscope does, very similar to what the telescope does. It was de- telescope does. It was debated for hundreds of years that if you didn't see it with the physical eye, it didn't exist. Well, we know the microscope came into awareness and created, and we know that not to be true anymore. And then same with the telescope. As we learn more about us, the world unseen, and our own universe, and just this small planet, this as Carl Sagan talks, this pale blue dot in a vast sea of space and stars and planets. So perception, when you become aware of what is unseen, just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's not there, you guys. Trust me on this. I've had you know lots of experiences, thousands of readings, and I've watched it many times, the signs, the symbols, the synergy. And synergy is the energy at the cellular level that combines and blends like a spiritual cocktail. And, of course, the synchronicities and coincidences. It's usually us as humans and the ego mind that wants to debunk it or reason it or logic it away. But sometimes it's just very simple, and like I said, it was it's a very subtle place, and if you tune into that, it becomes more alive, and it becomes more real to you based on your own belief systems. Your belief systems may change from this. It did for me. I you know, was taught one way, and through great trauma and tragedy, or what I call the TNT that blew my life up with the loss of both my brothers to murder and brain cancer in the same week, it changed who I am and how I receive and perceive the world and what is seen and unseen, but also my belief systems and what is God to me. Now, that's not for everybody. Everybody has their own journey. But perception is where we become, as a medium, as a professional medium, I become aware of communicating with the spirit within my own mind. We call this mental mediumship. It's receiving an idea that flashes in my mind, and people will ask, well, what's the difference between that and the imagination? Imagination's a little slower. It usually takes a couple seconds to come into my mind and be like, oh, that's more of my imagination. Where perceiving the world as spirit usually comes in out of nowhere. It's usually an idea that just, boom, pops right into your head, into your own mind, and it relays information received to those that may be seeking you out to have a reading. Or when I do my Mocha Monday Healing Cafe Live, I have people come into the Zoom room and they ask me, a question about their loved one, or they give me their first name or their loved one, and I'll I'll ask them, you know, would you understand this? And we would have an agreement, yes, that is a memory, or I, I would understand this, and that's evidence. And what that is, is that's me perceiving the world of someone who once lived, and I, like I said, this is different. These are people that had a heartbeat. These are people that lived life, passed through the portal of death or transformation or passing over, because death is not the end. Death is just the beginning. And this is very different from angels or ascended masters or your spirit guides, not to say that they don't exist. I believe in all three of those, but they did not incarnate and live a physical form and have experiences and then decarnate over to source, to energy, to God, whatever that is for you. And so everybody has, I'm sure, their own spirit guides or their own ascended masters or their own angels. I've had experience with angels myself, but when we're talking mediumship, this is perceiving those that once lived a life. 
And, uh, you know, perception comes in various faculties that we can use, uh, things that I've developed and learned over the last two decades of doing this. And it's becoming aware of spirit communicators. And it's in very simple terms, it just means using your extrasensory faculties. That's really all it means, just to keep this simple. And you've listened to the meditation before, so you should be in a nice, calm, relaxing place where your mind is not going a mile a minute. And we all possess these extra sensory faculties. We all believe and, and would confirm and have agreement of the five senses. See it, taste it, touch it, hear it, smell it. But we start to get into our spiritual senses of perceiving what is mediumship, perceiving the spirit world. And these are non-physical counterparts, counterparts of our physical senses. Like I said, feeling it, seeing it, hearing it, smelling it, tasting it, and a sense of knowing it, what is called claircognizance. And everybody has these faculties. I personally believe that. It may be even just a small percentage, but when people develop and they open and they have awareness and they set intent, they can really alter to a very many different degrees to enable the mediumship for them, for their journey. Not everybody has to do readings. Maybe you just want to talk to your loved one. So you ask, believe, receive, and perceive, and before you know it, you start receiving those signs, symbols, synergy, and synchronistic events from your loved one, whether it's in nature, whether it's maybe an animal like a hummingbird that triggers your mind, or a ladybug, or you see a lookalike, somebody that looks just like your loved one. That's happened to me on the bus, um, somebody that looked like my brother. Uh, it can come in the form of uh, lyrics to a song, where they're literally, you listen to that song, and you're like, oh my gosh, those lyrics. You can pick a passage out of a book. Uh, you know, whether it's, the, I would recommend a good book, an inspiring book, something, you know, scripture or something. I wouldn't choose, you know, War and Peace or something like that. But it can be a movie. It can be a poem. It can be, uh, you know, just living your life with things that they did to remind you of how they were in their life, their mannerisms, their personality, because that all carries over. It just, you know, just poof doesn't cease to exist. Energy, by the laws of physics, always continues on. You're either here or you're there. You always return to source. You turn the light bulb on, the energy's there. You turn the light bulb off, it goes back to source. Those are the laws of physics as we, as we understand them today, and that's always subject to change, right? Because science is not truth. Science is always changing based on what we learn at the time. But what we can do is some of these senses that you can start to tune into, and you can take these after the show is over, and you can start to work with what I call the two biggest senses, clairsentience and clairvoyance. Clairsentience is the ability to feel what is unseen. We, the largest organ on the body is the skin, so it would make sense to use the largest organ in the body, just like a cat has whiskers to sense their surroundings, and if you clip their whiskers, they lose their sense of uh, balance in a way, or they, they lose their sense of um, uh, you know, equanimity, I guess, would be a good word to say that balance, if you will. Uh, but it's you know, clairsentience is the ability to feel the presence or to become aware of spirit communicators. And, you know, like I said, it's usually based on evidence. It's usually based on a memory or a certain thing that nobody else would know about. When I'm doing my readings, I always, in the back of my mind with the skeptics out there, they're like, can you research that? Could you Google that? Could you find that on social media? Yes, you could. But I also believe that the spirit world, with as much love and intelligence that they have, they'll give me something that wouldn't be available in social media, wouldn't be available in Google. And you shouldn't do that anyway because it's unprofessional and it's unethical. And you're, in a sense, if you're going to do that, then you're you're being a con. <laughs> so, And the spirit world see that. So I, I wouldn't recommend doing that. But it is out there with skepticism, which is healthy to have that skeptical mindset. I always tell my clients that I and my students that. Clairvoyance, the ability to visually become aware of spirit communicators, those that once lived, and either subjectively within your mind, or objectively, as if the spirit person was standing right before you, and you see them with the physical eye. Now, I don't personally, I've had that a few experiences a couple times, but I'd say in the, in the years I've been doing this, it's less than 10, where I've actually seen the person with my physical eye. And when I did see it, I kind of blinked my eyes in disbelief anyway. So clairsentience and clairvoyance are usually the two abilities uh, in, in, in conjunction with our extrasensual faculties that we all have, that most of us have, to see it, taste it, touch it, hear it, and smell it. Now, some of us don't have sight. Some of us don't have hearing. But you can still perceive the spirit world through these clairsentience and clairvoyance abilities. Clairaudience, which is just like it sounds, the ability to hear or to become aware of spirit communicators, again, subjectively in the mind, the mind of us as mediums, or more rarely, objectively, to actually hear the song playing outside of your eardrum. 
and it's usually, you know, it's it's pretty where other people can hear it. That could be objectively a, a, a sign of evidence for a clear audience. Clarifactorance is the ability to smell aromas produced by those in the spirit world. Maybe it's a cologne, maybe it's a perfume, maybe it's a a meal that they used to cook. Maybe it's um, my very first reading I ever did. It was the smell of smoke coming from a pipe, a tobacco smell. And um, it was quite interesting because I could literally smell it. And I had to look around because we were in a, a little uh, ice cream parlor. And, was, you know, if you're smelling smoke in an ice cream parlor, then that's not a good thing. So I had to look around and there was no smoke. But it's just funny how the logical mind, the ego mind, the analytical mind will try to look for ways to debunk. And sometimes it's just as clear as it is. It's just what it is. It's simple. Um, as I like to say, keep it simple. You know, the kiss, uh, keep it simple, silly. So the other one is Claire Gustin's, which is the ability to taste flavors. I've had this. It's not one that I use a lot, but it has come up in my journey. So again, to recap, we have Claire Sentience, which is the ability to feel on the skin, the hair. Clairvoyance, the ability to see something in your mind, either subjectively in your mind or objectively outside of your mind. Claire Audience, the ability to hear the spirit world. Claire Factorians, the ability to smell aromas associated with those in the spirit world. Claire Gustinson's the ability to taste flavors in association with those in the spirit world. And it a lot of times I find that the spirit world will do something to connect with your perception and to for you to have a deeper understanding so you can relate. Again, ask, believe. You're going to then receive this information, and then you're going to perceive it because your perception is obviously different than my own. But then we have Claire, Claire Cognizance. And I find that a lot, of, a lot of mothers out there, if, you, if you're a mother listening to this show, you have that motherly intuition. You just know something, and it doesn't. It, it's without manifesting through any of the other five faculties. These faculties are separate aspects of mediumship. It's, um, it can be a combination of them, but that claircognizance is just the ability, whether it's you just know, the, the, you know their, their first name, maybe where they lived, how old they were, um, their, their profession, what they did in life, their relationship to your, uh, your sitter or the person that's come to you for the reading, memory links. And again, this can be used in conjunction with your other extracessor, extracessor sensory faculties, and that's claircognizance. So I would say with the work that I do, I use a lot of clairsentience. I can feel if I'm in the right state of mind, like what we did with that meditation, where we, you know, focused on the space in between our breath and our exhalations to perceive and start asking to perceive the spirit world. And then I work with my clairvoyance, which I get a lot of memories that are dropped into my mind, which is also in, in conjunction with claircognizance, where I just know something. And I've had readings where people are like, I don't know what you're talking about. That doesn't make sense to me. And then 20 minutes later, the light bulb comes on. Or the spirit is so adamant about continuing and staying with that that I'm like, are you sure? And they're like, well, no. Well, sometimes they get validated after the reading. And I always remind my clients and my students that some of the best information, some of the best evidence can come after the reading, not necessarily during the reading. So I have at times where that clear cognizance of just knowing something, and I'm like, well, this is what the person's telling me. And you're telling me no, so let's validate and let's just leave it there. It's not about getting into a right or wrong experience and, and disconnecting that link. It's about just saying, this is what they're giving. Go do a little bit further prospecting. Ask people, and I promise you they will validate. A good example of this is when I did my very first reading for my friend Kelly. Uh, her grandfather came through, and it was that pipe smoke I was smelling, and she didn't understand it. She was like, I don't think he smoked. I don't know. And then a few days later, she got back to me and said, Mark, I went and talked to my grandma, and he did smoke. He actually did have a pipe that he had left behind to his children, and he smoked uh, this very flavorful tobacco, um, which I was smelling. So it had to be validated, which was nice because that was my very first reading. But these are all what I like to say are signs, symbols, synchronicities, and um, synergy that can help you to connect to what is unseen and maybe only felt. And again, using your extrasensory faculties of clairsentience, clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairfactorience, clairgustinsense, and of course, claircognizance. So you can build on those, you can develop on those, you can learn more about those. Um, we could spend hours talking about that, but that is really in a nutshell perceiving the spirit world, and we do it with a calm mind, we do it with a calm clearing of the monkeys and the ego in our mind to get to that place to where we can actually start to receive and perceive that voice of spirit. So I just want to say thank you for hanging out with me today. 
I hope that this episode, this podcast has helped in some way, gives you a new direction to go in your journey to understand what is out there in the unseen world and also what is seen in the physical world, practicing and cultivating equanimity, but also becoming aware and to perceive the world of spirit. And I'm just going to leave you with the quote that I started the show with from Princess Diana, where she said, I'm aware that people I have loved and have died are in the spirit world looking after me. And that's so very true for you. So until our next soul adventure together, be kind, be caring, be compassionate, and most importantly, dare to dream, dare to explore, dare to live and discover that diamond within. And I'll see you guys here in a couple of weeks for another episode of Inspired Living Radio. Make sure to follow us, leave us a review. Have a great rest of your week. Much love and blessings to all. Namaste.